Hey everyone, Julian here today. I'm gonna be showing you how to make future wave trap in the style of Skylar. You guys have actually been requesting this style for a while, and today, here we go. So, as usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely go grab that. This is one of the best templates for this style I've ever heard on the market. I put a lot of time into studying this so I can make you guys something really good. And it's available at the top of the description. For just $5, you can get this awesome template. Again, don't miss out. Link is at the top of the description. Thanks for the support, guys. And let's stab it. Alright, we're at 134 BPM. You know, it gives you like a nice slow trap groove. Which actually, that does kind of make like this lead, for example, here. I think if you were going to go faster. Yeah, it's not quite the same thing as when it's just real deep and slow like that. And the first thing we have here is the bass line. So we're in the key of B minor here, and it's one of those progressions where you see you kind of walk down to the root note rather than starting on it. So we start on this G here. E. B, right? You know, actually a pretty simple progression. You're doing sixth, fourth, root, and then it goes up to the minor third at the end. And then I have this, you can see we're switching the octave of some of these, like here, and then here. You know, it's just kind of, it's the same exact notes, just different octaves. It makes the bass feel like it's changing and kind of moving throughout the track. For the sound, it's two layers, so we have a re-space. And then a sub. So for the Reese, what's happening? It's two layers. It's this operator layer, which you can hear is these two saw waves detuned a little bit, doing some FM. So you're getting that like beating, like whoa, whoa, whoa. got a little bit of a low pass on that. And then the other layer is just this huge unison saw wave inside of wavetable. Those are going together into some distortion, so here's without it. And then with it, we're just blending a little bit of amp on here, but it adds that nice mid-range and highs without taking away from the sound. This is being side-chained to the kick, and then we're high-passing it to make room for the sub. And then for the sub, it's actually just a, saw, or a sine wave with a little bit of FM from another sine wave. And then low passing that, and then that's just being side chained to the kick. And then they come together to make one bass. Then we have this Reese lead. So this is actually following the same progression I just showed you, right? You can see it's G, E, B, sixth, fourth, root note, and then that D, that minor third at the end. But what we're doing here is it's playing that and it's following what the other basses are doing so it's very it's gonna fit with that but then we're sliding up to these notes which you can see are adding a bit of a melody to it right it's all just stuff you know if we're in the key of b minor here this is like okay we got like a sixth a fourth a fifth a root note, a minor third, another fourth, or excuse me, a root note, and then another minor third. So again, like, very simple musically, but it adds that, those, that little melody to it, and also a bit of groove, you know, you can hear. This plays really nicely off the kick and snare. And for this sound, it's made with wavetable. It's just one saw wave with a ton of this shimmer unison. This is really good for these kinds of leads where you're going to distort it, but you still want unison. And we've got this on monophonic with a bit of glide. Some reverb, which is being distorted by this amp. You can see we're still blending the amp, just like on the Reese up there. So, Because if you take this all the way up, it's just going to be too crunchy. So you just add that as a layer. And the reverb going through that adds some texture as well. We got a high pass filter, so it doesn't get in the way of the Reese or the sub. And then we have it being side chained to the kick. Then we have the last synth here, which is the pad. Now, what this is, if I play it over the progression. You 
there just in the background there, but it's adding some nice, like, musical... I call it musical texture. Like, it's not following the exact chord progression that everything else is playing, but it's adding texture to the progression. And the way we do this is it's basically just a bunch of notes in the key of B minor, because that's the key that everything else is in, but it's just not following the exact same progression. So here what we're doing is it's like every bar it changes chords. You know, we're doing like this fifth and root note, then minor third and sixth, minor seventh and a root note. You can see like it's all pretty simple musically, but again, it just kind of stays in its own little box. And then plays off of what the bass is doing. And for the sound on this one, it's made with wavetable. So we have actually a triangle wave going into a low pass. And what I'm doing is I have this fold over here. So you can hear that's just like kind of moving the waveform around. And I have an LFO on that. And then we have a bunch of noise unison, some reverb, a high pass, and then a side chain. Again, this is pretty much like background. Keep it a little bit subdued. And then we have the vocals. Now, this is kind of like one of those things where it's a melody. While the bass is changing the progression, this just stays playing its own melody, and you get a really nice... Like, you can hear that. It just plays off of that really well. It also plays really well with the lead, too. So that's something to keep in mind, too. Like, not just choosing any old vocal sample, but something that kind of fits well with the other elements already. That's how I picked this one. Like, I already had those synths, and then I just found a vocal that would fit really nicely into here. And so we've got two channels of vocals. The first one is just a high pass, a little bit of reverb, and it's being sidechained. The high pass is important though, you definitely want to make sure this doesn't get in the way of the bass. And then the second layer is actually pretty much the same, except we're distorting it. So it kind of helps separate the vocal traps, you know, it makes it feel like there's more dimension because you have one, which is kind of different. And also the distortion works together with that vocal sample like that. You know, that fits well with the distortion versus like if I put distortion on this, for example, you know, this has got a lot of high end. You can hear it's going to be, it's not going to work as well. So you just have to know what samples you're working with. Then we have the drums, which kind of start with the main groove, which would be the kick and the snares. But then I've also got a lot of percussion in there. Right? So again, most of the groove that you're hearing is actually the kick and the snare. Like, you can even just take all the other percussion out and do just that if you want. And I've heard that in a few of these tracks. So really, you know, you just have to write these good trap patterns where it's not too busy on the kick, but also, like, it's not just, like, one kick every bar. Like, you want to have some, you know, some groove happening. Like there, like having one big kick and then holding out for just do do It's gonna make that more powerful. You know, we do those little do 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 like you hear in a lot of these wave tracks. Also having the snare kind of do a few little hits like so again, these are just like really grooving off of each other, and I can't stress that enough. Now you notice when it comes to these samples, we're actually not processing them at all. You really don't want to do that. You don't want to do too much over-processing with the style. I really believe this operates on that same thing as just making like a good trap beat. Like just turn the kick and the snare up, get them loud enough, and then you're not going to be worrying too much about saturating them or trying to push them because it'll cut through the mix if you just get it at the right level. <laughs> With the snare, we have two layers. Which allows us to get one which is really dry and punchy. Which can kind of hold it down. And then this one can just be like all space. And then you put them together.
there you go. So then we have the percussion, which is made up of a few different layers, mainly like just stuff in the high end. If you listen to it. It's all just high end stuff, right? So it starts up here. Really, it starts with this, just like some good trap hi-hats. Right, so you can hear that on its own, it's just really solid. You know, and this kind of pattern, it starts with the eighth notes, right? Just call it like the two step, like the t -t 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 -t. Right, so I just started with that, and then you just listen and try to find like a few moments here and there where you can add little rolls and try to make it exciting without it feeling like too much like a loop. And you can hear, if you put them in the right spot and don't just make it like, like you don't want to just duplicate that over, right? But if you put them in the right spot, you can get a really good groove with this. And again, no processing on that. We also have an open trap hi-hat. Which you can hear is just kind of giving that some more bounce. We also have a ride. Which is like very high pass. I've heard this in a lot of these tracks though. It actually can add a lot to the groove to just have like that. You see when I bring that in it really adds a lot. And then we have two other kind of like background synth or hi-hat layers. So the first one is the synth hi-hat. So all this is is a bit of white noise actually with a bandpass filter and then this LFO on sample and hold which basically means random like it's just moving around in a different place every time. And you can hear that just adds some nice kind of movement to the hi-hat pattern because it's moving around so you're getting the one really steady you know punchy hi-hat. And then a little bit of just motion in the background. Plus we have this Foley percussion, which you can see just. And then it stops. You just get like two bars of that. So it's kind of like a stop and start effect, but it works really well. So you can see there's layers going on with the percussion here that's really making this all work. And then the last thing we got down here is just a bit of vinyl noise. You can see that's probably turned up the loudest because it tends to get buried if you don't. As you can hear that, just adding a bit of space and atmosphere to the track. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything from this video is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely don't miss out while it's still available. Go grab that. It's a really great template and it'll help you make the best tracks of your life today. I promise. Thank you so much for the support, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.